Is 2021 the year you're finally going to embrace video? Well, I've got 10 video marketing trends to share with you that I think is going to convince you the answer is yes. On the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet episode 152 and you can find all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com jenna brian i'm excited to talk about video we've been like video like entrenched in video for weeks now so uh this is going to be fun to talk about we are becoming a little bit of an expert or two in or the three. process of uh how to make videos better how to manage it on youtube and i'm excited i came across an article that i have seen twice now so I think it just said to me, you know, I need to share this with our audience. Uh, most of it, 80% of it is really applicable to the real estate industry, but it's exciting to kind of share. Man, I swear to God, I think I talked about this last three or four years. You gotta do video, you gotta do video. And But man, this last year in the, during the pandemic, there's things that definitely impacted these trends. Absolutely. About. So it's like a study of what happened in 2020 and what everyone is saying that's any kind of expert in the video marketing arena for what are the trends, what are the video marketers, what are the businesses that use video doing in the new year? That's what I'm gonna share with everybody today. Love it. All right, so we ready to dive in and talk about it? Let's dive in. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. So let's dive in. I want to share, I want to share uh, 10 video trends for 2021 and then some ideas around what does that mean and how can you take that and, and what can you actually go do in your real estate business. So the very first one is the, the overall video usage in 2021 and the it's 99% of everybody that is a video marketer or a business that is using video in a survey, uh, there's a link in the show notes to, you can get all these images and you, in our show notes today, you'll be able to get the link to the, where this where this infographic lies online. And it's, there. 99% of everyone that uses video now is going to be continuing to use video in the future. Now that's a no brainer in my book, um, but, the, but I, what I did like about this particular stat was these are the top video trends, okay, from 2020 that are going to that they predict are going to continue in 2021. What are the most uh, used types of videos? Well, 72% of marketers use what they call explainer videos, and explainer videos are exactly that. If you sell a product or a service, you're explaining to people what it is that you do. So two, two easy ideas that I just came up with as I was looking at this is you, if you're, if you're doing lead generation or even with your database and you have a website and an app and various tools that you're using, you really need to create an explainer video on how to use your website. Hey everyone, here's uh, thanks for visiting or, you know, completing a form or responding to my ad. I just wanted to show you how, how very quickly how to use my website, how to save a search, Help people do that. That's something that you could record one time and include it in your follow-up with uh, anyone, okay? Even in your own database, letting everyone know. Everyone likes to look at houses. So I just, I just recorded a quick video to show you how to do that. Now, um, what's cool is you can put all this stuff up on YouTube. You can embed it into your um, email follow-ups and so forth. You could do it for like a mobile home search app, whatever you have, whatever you have that is something that you're wanting to share with people. Love the idea of an explainer video. Another one is presentation videos. Well, I've been saying this for years. Record your pre-listing package, your pre-listing. Here's what I do to list your home. Here's what we do to work with you when we're helping you purchase a home uh, and so on, right? So that's easy. It's evergreen and it should be out there for people to find. And then you can obviously use it specifically when you're following up in appointments. 
That's 49% of, of uh, video marketers use presentation videos. Then 48% testimonial videos, they say, get the most work for them. Well, that's easy too. You know, everyone, it's really hard getting people to give you a testimonial. And that's going to be twice as hard to get people to give you a video testimonial. So you got to find a solution for that. Maybe you have a client who is okay with doing that. And maybe just do a Zoom. Here's an idea. Do a simple Zoom or a Google Meet. Um, I don't know if you can record on Google Meet, but on Zoom you can record. You could just record where you just both of you are right there. Um, the challenge with the Zoom, Matt, is even when if you and I were doing a Zoom together, what would happen is whoever's talking, it would bounce and focus on, which I think it could work though, right? So if I was to set it up and I was gonna get Matt to do a testimonial, I would just stop talking. I would make sure I didn't talk, right. I'd set him up. I would interview him maybe. And then you could grab that video and now you have it. So you can make it fun. You could just, you could do it that way, right? Yeah, and you can, you could even take that a step farther. If you, if you do any sort of video editing and have any sort of other uh, platform like Camtasia, we use that all the time. You could drop that video in there and you can make it to where just that the consumer or the customer or the client portion of that testimony was actually in the video. You could do a lot with that. Yeah. So you don't have to make it difficult. It's not like you have to go right. out of Canon uh, EOS M50 Mark, Mark, Mark II. <laughs> which which we all have right now, which we're recording on right now, which we love. Yeah, we, we do. don't need that. You can just use Zoom. You could use your phone. I mean, seriously. So have some fun with that. And then 42% each for sales videos and video ads. Well, I'm going to talk about video ads in a second. But sales videos are your services, again, things that, you're, that you do. Uh, number two was the live stream boom. Well, hello. Uh, this statistic is amazing to me, Matt. In 2021, the average consumer will have nine and a half video streaming apps installed on their devices. I was like, I went back to go look and see. I don't think I'm at nine and a half, but I think I have about six. I only have three. I have more. I mean, you know, so uh, yeah, uh, because uh, YouTube is considered that. So YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus. Well, I guess Facebook's a, a live streamer too. You know, so. <laughs> Uh, now, now th this doesn't really have a big application for for real estate, but the point is people are consuming tons of videos, including live stream due to the pandemic in this last year, right? The trend number three is more short form videos like TikTok and Instagram Reels will continue to trend in 2021. Now, there's some interesting things that were in this article. Rumors for Instagram Reels include possible monetization. This is big for business opportunities for content creators. Uh, new it video editing tools and improved look and the ability to sell products and services directly on Reels. We're going to have to watch and see if that happens. Um, Matt, have you ever done a Reel? I have not. Have you looked at it? I've yeah. looked, I started to look at it, but I didn't get into it. I actually made a video. So here's what I'm going to say about this whole TikTok, Instagram Reels. It's just like stories, whatever it is. You know, people will say, hey, well, should I jump onto that? And I said, I don't know. Are you good on TikTok or Reels? Are you good at, I mean, so I, my point is I have found real estate influencers, real estate people out there who are good in that space. It's a very small percentage of people because like anything, it takes a commitment. You can't throw a couple of uh, Facebook stories or Instagram stories or Reels or TikTok videos up and think you're going to get somebody to call you. But if you right. consistently do that and you actually have a, a hook, right? something that's interesting, like TikTok's all about people dancing and doing different things. But I've seen some cool TikTok videos of people using um, their video phone and so forth to create cool short form 15 second videos on houses, really cool houses. So people like to look at houses. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying only do it if you're really into it. Yeah. You're going to, it's going and to be set your, set your expectation. That's really the key with all of video, right? With uh, Honestly. Your it's got to be your groove. It's got to be, this That's is right. my thing. I'm into this and I do it all. I fit it into it's the thing I do in addition to staying in touch with my database or something. Right. All right. Number four is user generated video content. Now this is interesting. Users arriving on an e-commerce site uh, via a user generated video content uh, are 184% more likely to purchase. Now, how does this impact us in real estate? Well, frankly, I think it's all about the power of client testimonials and online reviews. So what this is saying is that someone on YouTube that might be saying, wow, the Canon M50 camera is just awesome and this is how we use it. And people go online to research product services that they're going to get. 
And when someone else, not the brand, is talking about that brand, that's what this means. So it's about online reviews and getting more people to do. It's kind of back to that particular uh, piece, okay? Now, this one falls into our niche, Mr. Emerson, and I thought you'd be interested in knowing that. The stat, the e-learning grew. So more online training and educational videos is number five trend for video marketers. The e-learning um, e learning platforms and so forth grew by 36.3% in 2020. Of course they did. And is can, expected to grow even more in 2021. Why? People were going on places like YouTube, like some of the other platforms. Hopefully more will be coming to WVNL Coaching soon because this is where people want to go consume information and learn whatever their interests are, right? That's right. So where are all the information is in, in your real estate business too, with buyer seller workshops, you know, the there you go. mortgage information, did your life of an escrow. I mean, you could put together a, a nice little uh, intro to real estate course very easily. And you would there probably you That's what you thank you. Thank you. So I have talked about this before on the podcast, Matt. It's time to embrace that real estate show. That's right. Doing that weekly Facebook Live. That's something we've committed to doing. That's it right. takes a while to build an audience. But what happens that we're, what we see the benefit of what we do on a weekly basis when we're in our Facebook group, our private group, which, by the way, you can join our private group anytime. Just go to just Google WBNL. Wanderers it, Club. Yep. Wanderers Club. WBNL um, Wanderers Club. WBNL Wanderers Club when you're in Facebook and you can join our private group because we are putting content up there three days a week. You know, uh, Matt just did a great Canva tip yesterday. I always do. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we are live on Facebook. We'll be happy to take your questions. Um, if nobody's there, we record content and then we, we have strategically put them into units inside of our group. So you can, you don't have to scroll through the timeline. You can look and go right to Cosmos tech tips, Matt's Canva tips. So you can go to my business and real estate tips and get and scroll through the, what we've talked about and watch the videos on demand. That's what that's all about. You can do the same thing for your clients, but you can do it through Facebook live to start with. You don't have to get into YouTube. You need a YouTube channel. If you're going to do videos, we'll talk about that on another podcast. But um, once your videos are done, it's all about repurposing them. You can now put them into a playlist on your Facebook channel. You, uh, you know, you can put them back up to YouTube if you want to, but think evergreen content. That's what I wanted to say here. You can create the series on uh, how to buy a home in, in you know, where am I? Wesley Chapel, Florida. How to buy a home, you know, a series of evergreen videos of everything that you generally do. So think about taking your listing presentation or your buyer consultation, which you should have, into small videos. What are the steps in the process? And then over time, you could create these and then you could be doing so many things with repurposing this content. It's something you could do once a month in your newsletter. It's another video that you've done, but you can put it in a series that people can, uh, if they are interested in buying a home and you're sending a video email along to them every couple of weeks. So much cool stuff that you can do with this, but you know what it takes? Commitment to the process. Okay. You, have to, you have to basically go, I'm going to own video. You know, I'm, I'm talking Matt, to a lot of my clients right now about this, and I'm just getting people to choose one thing to do. It's clearly not everything I'm covering here. I'm just I'm just saying to you, maybe you're just going to focus on focus on client testimonials right now. Maybe you'll just do one kind of video a month, and that to me, the biggest bang for your buck is to do a video on what's happening in the market. That's right. That to me is the easiest one to do. You, we've talked about it in previous podcasts. I just talked about it a couple times ago on being an industry expert, and uh, we've talked about it in putting it in your newsletter. It keeps you on top of what's happening and it really can help people start to see that you are a local area expert. I would just do that. Start with that one thing. Then you can, if you really get into doing video, then you can do the weekly show and go to a Facebook live and integrate some of these evergreen uh, videos. That's all about your comfort level too. And your, your, your world will expand as you become more comfortable with it. Um, number six in here is just simply saying how ridiculous, how much money is being spent on video advertising on the various platforms. It's, expend, it's expected, it's going to continue to grow, but by 2024, these experts that put this together are saying $12.6 billion are going to be spent by 2024 on um, uh, video advertising because it's not going away. That's no, to that point, very interesting. Have you uh, been hearing about the Super Bowl ads for this year and how so? Oh my gosh, I, I find that so interesting, but yeah. they're they're backing off. But the people, the, those companies are putting like Budweiser, who else? Um, 
Hyundai, oh, Pepsi, and Coke. It's all, all a lot of the big advertisers have jumped out. By the way, yes, but do you see what they're doing with the money instead? Yep. It's all about uh, pen, you know, COVID well, it's, vaccine. It's, it's kind of, it's really twofold. You know what I mean? It's like so many things have happened during the pandemic that have forced people to kind of, kind of rethink the way they're doing their business. And this is an opportunity to jump out of the trillion dollar Super Bowl ad mix and then put your money online. A lot of it too. So it's interesting to see what's going up with all that space. I don't know. Um, the other, yeah, totally. I think it's so cool. Um, it is going to be, I, you know, people watch the Super Bowl to see those cool ads, but the big one yeah, is. But the point is, if, they, if those ads, if those ads are somewhere else, and people are on their phones all the time too, it's a, you know, it's a way, way cheaper play. And you're going to, your audience is probably just as big, or near. Very intriguing um, to yeah. think about um, something like Budweiser with the Clydesdales and this I know. historic thing, and the, you know, the cute, the cute. They always do cute ones with dogs and this and that. Sure. All right, number seven is keep investing in the vid in video marketing. So this this particular trend from video marketers, they're saying eighty nine percent of video marketers say they get a good return on invest investment from videos. So as as businesses look at everything that they do, the majority, you know, more than a majority, eighty nine percent of them. Actually, the statistic I saw was that pr pretty much all of them are saying about eight eighty percent. They're getting like an eighty percent return on what they're spending because video works. People are, are especially if it's gotta be done well though too, I'm sure there's more to it than that. Uh, number eight is interactive augmented reality and virtual reality, AR, VR marketing worldwide is expected to hit 72.8 billion That's crazy. In, 20, uh, in uh, by 2024. So how do we use this in real estate? Well, Matt, you got me thinking when I saw this stat, I was like, wow, that, it's it's anything AR VR that lets people see visually uh, how things are done. Right. As an example, for real estate, Matt did a video the other day or a week or so ago on um, what was it? Bear, bear, yeah, bear. yeah but color trends, twenty twenty one color trends. So that's an example of them using some augmented reality where you can go and and put pictures, you know, put paint on a house. And get a look and see what it uh, you know what the house is going to look like if you paint the interior. There's other stuff. There's there's um, furniture placement and being able right. to put your floor plan and you know you can. There's all kinds of cool stuff that's out there, software that's out there that would help people see what would they do, how would they design their house. Um, so I find that really interesting that that's going to be continuing. Number nine was uh, the rise of shoppable videos. Well, this is really more for people selling goods and but my gosh, this is the truth, boy. Shoppable videos have higher engagement rates than display advertising it will be starting to trend even more in 2021. This is all about, you know, people buying things from Facebook and Instagram. And man, that's crazy because I do that. I mean, I, I do really that. Think it's wild how much I have purchased from Facebook this year. And I always thought I would never do that, but I have. So I, I got to give you an example of how powerful, um, you know, the retargeting is. It's really scary how powerful it is. So. I was in the process of moving here to Florida that I uh, yesterday to start, you know, getting my car registered and driver's license and all. I got to do all this stuff to make that happen, by the way. So I was getting new quotes for insurance for my car. And I decided to go back to USAA, which I'd had before. And I got a really good deal on that. It was, you know, military uh, discounts and this. And so I'm jazzed. So I decided to go and I didn't even, all I did was I called one of my sisters and you're like, we well, should go. We got State Farm. Here's what we did. So I just put in State Farm in Google, went to the site. I think I clicked on one thing and I just I said, you know what? I'm just going to stick with USA for my reasons, that military connection. And my goodness, within five minutes, I had a State Farm ad. And it had a video in it, too, because it was moving and so forth, because it caught my eye, which I've never had a State Farm ad in my Facebook feed. And there it was. And that's just simple retargeting, folks. That's just people. Uh, it's not hard to do. We can probably get Cosmo. I bet Cosmo will be teaching some some of that when we're doing sure. Regen. Where but you, you be stuck with USAA. USAA. We, honestly, retargeting is nothing more than having a certain bit of Facebook pixel code on your website. And when somebody comes to it, you have an ad that says anytime somebody comes to my website, send them this ad on their Facebook thing. And it could be a welcome video. This is how I've seen people do this to, to this point yeah. is you, you, somebody comes to your website and then they don't sign up for, you know, completing a form or they play around a little bit and look at houses, but you could target those folks by saying, Hey, I see that you visited my website, which freaks people out. 
or thanks for visiting my website. I wanted to be able to take a minute and tell you a little bit about what you can do on my website, or honestly, it could be something as easy as that. And then that's all just set up and you pay so much. I, we can, we'd have to get Cosmo to tell us how much that costs. I think it depends, um, sure. but very interesting, right? Because those big businesses are doing it and it works because somebody starts something just like what happens in how, how long, how many times have you started? I did this yesterday too. Not because of what we're talking about today, but this is just the way things work. Right. This is the way, this is I, the way. I was online and I, I saw something that I wanted to go get, which is something to do with videos um, because, you know, it's what we're doing. And the guy was selling some kind of, oh, I know what it was. It was a video diary. It was a video, the, I forget, it had a cool name, like where you can write down your video thoughts and, it, and then you, you know, like the way we have a template set up for how we do our YouTube videos. And I was like, this is cool. Let me look at it. I think it was, I thought it was free. And so I just, I said, no, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to use it. I have, we have an old online way that we're doing it, but it was like a journal and I'm a sucker for journals. Okay. So, uh, here comes, you know, an email and, um, Hey, it looks like you started the process of, you know, you abandoned the car. How many times have you gotten that one? Right. And that's all part of the, you know, the, the smart stuff that's built into anything that we do online anymore, but it works. And this is just systems that you put in place. Right. Right. And my favorite of all of these, to be honest, which I just knew is going to be the case. And there's just, and it's part of what we're continuing to coach is virtual events are here to stay. Seven out of 10 event organizers move their in-person event online in 2020. Think about that conferences. I mean, I don't know how many conferences I attended, that I normally would go to that were online, just in the real estate business, the M and Connects. Going forward, this is the key piece, nearly half expect virtual events to continue trending. So the, the biggest thing I wanna say here is, have you mastered, have you really truly mastered Zoom? You know, I know you all know how to get on a Zoom because you've been on hundreds of them in the past year, but I bet the majority of you are not comfortable running a Zoom starting it, sharing. I'm telling you in the beginning, you fumble all over the place. Now we're masters of it because we do so many of them. Um, you've got to be able to do that in my opinion. How are you gonna use Zoom and virtual events? Well, everything from your client appreciation events that you can't do in person maybe this year, you could do some fun things online. We've talked about it all last year. Uh, we shared all kinds of ideas on how to put virtual seminars on, how to hold a virtual open house, so there's things that you can do besides one-on-one -on -one with clients, out-of-state clients, everything. So put that on your list. If you went all last year and said, oh, I don't really understand the technology and I don't want to do it, I don't get it, or whatever you might have said, uh, virtual meetings, virtual presentations aren't going away. And you know, I've, I've learned to use Google Meet. I'm going to tell you, Google Meet is, is pretty cool. Google Meet is, uh, several of my clients prefer that. And you can do all the same stuff and sharing and all that. You're just easy. And it's yeah, my cool. baby uses Google Meet. That's what their uh, preferred classroom uh, platform is. You know what? I want to talk about virtual events for just a second. You know, as a wanderer, you know, it's been impossible to get out and really do anything. There has been an explosion of uh, virtual meetings for national parks, for historic societies. I, I, there are two that I go to monthly. Uh, there is a the uh, a Los Angeles National or a Historical Society that takes you on 90 minute tours of different parts of Los Angeles. They talk about the history and, and fun facts and, you know, wow. mysteries and stories. And then there's a New York one that is so great. And I'm using these not only just to gain information because I feel like I'm doing a little traveling, a little wandering when I'm watching them, but I'm finding all kinds of great places to go the next time I go because I'm learning things that uh, places and, and um, stories uh, that I didn't know before. So what a great way to plan your next vacation right from your own home. I'm just, I'm having a ball with it. It is really, really fun. I love it. Have, speaking and they're of all that, charging 10 and they're, Hey, listen, they're charging 10 bucks a head to go to all these. So they're, right. this is the prop. This is how they're making their money during the downtime, right? Not the national park ones are free, but a lot of these other ones are charging to go to. Right. Well worth I mean, 10 bucks to me. It, 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 everything from that to businesses, to artists, uh, people sure. who are touring, you know, doing virtual, uh, concerts and stuff. It's just kind of neat. I, I just think that, you know, we're going to deal with the pandemic and the vaccine stuff. I mean, what, what's on, it's practically February as we record this yeah. until the summer, right? I mean, seriously. Uh, you know what? Things are going to be normal to 2022. Let's just be realistic about it. You know, or maybe really, real normal. 
Right. Well, we got to make the best of it. So these are the trends. Figure out what's going to work for you. You know, speaking of traveling, are you guys even considering planning anything this year, or is it just, you know? We, we will. We we are planning to go up to the Sierra sometime this summer. We we would like to get away for a while. We have a um, couple of things that might be standing in our way from that. Well, with that, but we're planning on doing something close and something away from people. So it'll be. It will definitely be in the mountains if we get up and go. Yeah. So not we're like planning on or... doing a bunch of day trips or just you know overnight yeah. trips in California because I'm we're so lucky here. Well, everyone's lucky where they live because there's always something to go to see right around where you are within you know a driving distance. So we got some things planned. I'll tell you one place I wanted to go and we might even do it this weekend uh depending upon what the conditions are we're, we're supposed to have one heck of a a rain and snowstorm coming through tomorrow really? yeah it's going to be a big one big one uh, matter of fact i keep getting flash flood warnings uh, on my phone saying there's gonna be flash flood warnings here in anaheim which is crazy um but that means there's going to be a ton of snow last week when it snowed death valley was just covered nothing like to see death valley the lowest part uh, lowest uh, elevation in the united states where it's usually 120 degrees have snow on it so if it snows out there this weekend and i'm pretty sure it will we're going to be making a trip out to death valley this week. well that's cool did you see all the pictures of snow in vegas yeah like, it's crazy vegas. i love it it was great i think it was almost two days of snow actually mm -hmm. it seemed like because people were posting stuff i was like wow crazy yeah uh well that's all exciting and you got to find ways to stay you know uh, getting up and getting out like we like to talk about on the podcast and I like that virtual way but to me here making the move here I'm looking forward to getting out and, and, and going and visiting some of like the favorite state parks that we've been to and maybe doing a little traveling as the as we get settled in a little bit gets a little bit well does, it's not raining or whatever the, the temperature is okay to go to the beach and that type of stuff so Okay, before we go again, before we go, Jan, I have to bring up, because when we were talking about the Super Bowl, all I could think about was, I got Smart Pack. Got Smart Pack. <laughs> That's a year old now. Never gets Smart Pack. Hey, how about who's in the Super Bowl? The uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady leading the way. Uh, how your your alliances stand with all of your teams now that well, you're. Here's the deal, you know, I wasn't, I I was not, I wasn't always a. Uh, I was born in Boston, but I never really liked the Patriots. And it right. seemed like I did not like Tom Brady. I actually like Tom Brady. Um, so, of course, now it's like, okay, got it. you know, I'm excited about uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I didn't really have a football team anyway. Uh, I like the Miami Dolphins. I grew up liking the Miami Dolphins, believe it or not, because my, my dad was a huge fan. So that's kind of cool. And But right now, sports-wise, since you brought the subject up, got to share the – Golden Knights are doing so well. They're like five, one and one. They just lost a game in overtime. Um, oh, crazy thing happened, Matt. The first time during this whole craziness with COVID, the entire coaching staff for the Golden Knights the other night self quarantined because somebody tested positive. So yeah, interesting. So who they had was a general manager who years ago used to be a coach, was the head coach, and they brought the uh, Hen the Henderson Silver Knights, which is the the, the new team that's the you know the the um, next level down team that are really about to start. They haven't even started yet. They're no, that stadium. That stadium is coming along out there. It's too. beautiful. They brought their coaches in, yeah. so it was a little interesting to watch. It, it made you really realize in watching this game how important the coaching staff is because in hockey they're constantly calling out what lines go out and sure. there's confusion and it was kind of interesting. But anyway, the, they're doing great. The Tampa Bay Lightning, of course, are the are the uh, the Stanley Cup champions from last year, they're doing pretty well. So I'm gonna see. Watch now, watch that, everywhere. now that you're an East Coaster, I'm going to see just how true you're a Golden Knight. Oh, I'll always be a Golden Knights fan. Can't get rid of that. You keep saying that. I'm I don't an know. original Maybe fan. Time will tell, East Coaster. Right. Okay. Well, that's it, folks. We will see you next week right at the WBNL podcast. That's right. And as always, get up, get out, mask up. You know what? Play it safe. Double mask up. Double mask up. Triple mask up. And be forever wandering, but not long. <laughs> All right. <laughs>